That could be a weapon. Yo, you don't gotta put that in my face. You don't gotta put that. Yo! Get up there! Get the Well, that doesn't look very pleasant. Joining me now, the lady who had to experience all that, Gabby Cuchia. She is a media correspondent with Drano Media. I love me some Rogan. He's awesome. All right, uh, Gabby, what? first of all, what were you even doing there? That looked dangerous and scary. What was I doing? I was doing what the media fails to do. And when I see a story, I show on up. And that's exactly what my intent was on taking that flight. I actually, I was in I'm in Florida now, DC Drano. We are in Florida, and uh, I was enjoying the nice sunshine. I saw that there was an anticipated Antifa Super Bowl, is what uh, those at Washington in Seattle uh, called the event that they were anticipating to happen on Sunday evening, um, in which there was a Israel uh, demonstration that was doing a march up into their church called the Pursuit, and they were anticipating this original route was to go through the Hamas encampment, and I. I wanted to be there. I wanted to actually see what this looks like. You always see short clips of chaos. I mean, you could consider the short clip of mine to be a little bit of chaos. And I wanted to get the full story, see what the encampment was like. I spent about four hours in there. That was four hours prior to that, um, to the moment where the Israel demonstrators came on up to the encampment. And I learned a lot. I saw a lot. The reason behind all of it, what was I doing there? I was being a journalist and showing up. You know, everyone loves to tweet from afar. I just like to take flights and, and get there. I uh, dig it. Can you explain, I mean, just, look, just dump it on us, walk us through these encampments. All I've seen are the daggone videos online. Where are they? Who are these people? Does it smell? Is there beer? What, what is it like there? Uh, it's absolutely wild. So just to walk you through it. So at the University of Washington specifically, they had state troopers. They had Seattle PD. They had Kings County PD. They had campus police there. The campus police there, when I first arrived, it was around 1 30, 2 o'clock. I talked to campus police. I saw that they started putting out barriers. I said, oh, those are mighty fine barriers. Are those from Antifa? And again, I say Antifa because there's the signage of Antifa. You have all the outfits. You got the goggles. You got the knee pads. You got the gloves. Top to bottom decked out, there was no questioning that Antifa is at these encampments. Now, when I spoke to campus police and I asked about those barriers, they told me that those barriers were supplied by the university. They were instructed to put the barriers to protect this encampment, to protect the encampment to make sure that no one enters it. Now, as far as I'm concerned, the University of Washington is public property. And then when I when they had told me this, I had followed up with them with a, hey, kind of like today where we're going to have a counter protest or you're just a student trying to get on by. Are you going to protect them? They explicitly say, I have audio that I dropped on my Twitter and two posts um, and more audio to come, but they say that they have their hands tied. They are obligated to protect this Hamas encampment and the, the Hamas pro-Palestinian uh, protesters first and foremost, not the students, not any other counter protests um, to add to that barrier. So the barriers that they had initially about three weeks ago were their own Antifa provided ones. And the university did them a solid and gave them those nice new metal barriers on top of the fact that they, as I walked to and from uh, for the Sunday and Monday through the, the encampment, there were porter potties being installed and the university also wanted to make sure that they're able to go to the bathroom freely. So you really genuinely can't make it up. Yes, did it stink a little? Did I see a lot of armpit hair? Absolutely. Everyone's dressed the same. You have oh. your pro-Palestinians. Then you have your Antifa. Then the tents are incredible. I, you know, just you know, stop me anytime you want. I can go on for days. But the campus no, police also told me, yeah, I showed up the next morning. It was dead quiet. You could hear a pin drop. I'm walking through the encampment. I actually peeked under the tents to see if I could see feet poking out anyone kind of just a little restless while they're sleeping. There's no one there. Campus police told me that um, about 50%, at least 50% of those tents are vacant. The people that come in and out, at least 50% in their words are not students. They do whatever they do and show on up uh, when it's advantageous for them, when there's a counter protest, whatever it may be. And it's such a darn shame. When I was there, I tried speaking with any student that was willing to, all of them so scared to talk to me. I would say, hey, you know, do you follow DC Drano? They'd get all excited, you know, Jesse, just as you did, um, and our fans. And they still were like, they didn't want to talk. That could have been like their moment for fun to be like, hey, I was on, you know, Drano, I was on Rogan's page, all scared scared to death to even comment on the reality of the situation. But you can't be surprised by the University of Washington because this is the same school that said black students did not have to take their exams after George, George Floyd, which is absolutely heinous. I can't, you can't make it up.
you can't make it up. There's emails um, that I have on hand that say state just that. So incredible, truly. There you have it. At least for now, I'll keep going. But. Oh. <laughs> I almost forgot after St. George Floyd died how insane this country went. All right, yeah, the mood, I know that's a really weird question to ask, but I am curious about it. D does it feel like uh, just kind of a fun thing that a bunch of idiot college kids are doing? Hey, let's go have a beer and protest for a little while in the encampment. Or did it feel dark? Lots of times these things feel really, really dark. Did it feel dark or is it just a bunch of kids screwing off? Yeah, I'll, I'll say, you know, they were kind of set up for success in the sense of like the weather genuinely was like the first like sunny day that they've had for a long time, you know, all jokes aside. So much of a reason for everyone to kind of be out and seek what was truly going on at this encampment. But uh, you are correct. Yes. Yeah, so when I was there about 30 minutes prior to the um, Israel demonstrators making their way up, so it's about 4.30 p.m. when they were approaching the liberated zone, if you want to call it that shore, um, it it went from pretty happy people like listening to music. I mean, it's nuts. They're selling fruit. They're selling um, flowers, but capitalism is bad. I don't know. Sure. It's a bunch of hippies, truly. And I like the hippie life, but not to that extent. Um, and then as soon as 30 minutes uh, up to them showing on up, the, the Israel demonstrators, everyone started flooding all of the perimeter, everyone popping out of their tents, making sure that they have numbers written on their forearm. I'll tell you, since I spent so much time there, um, that these numbers that were written on the forearm, I had spent the time with them. They didn't know I was part of Drano Media. They befriended me. They made. They asked me, oh, do you have the, the Northwest Community Bail Fund number? And I was, excuse me? Do you have the number? If you get any escalated law enforcement that you have interaction with, you will, uh, bail will be set at $1,000, of which you will only have to pay 10% of that, which means I only have to pay $100 of, of a get out of free jail card from the Northwest Community Bail Fund to go a step further. I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but I really just want to make sure that we're emphasizing this. Um, and I'm going to drop a video uh, this evening, kind of uh, you know, piecing this all together. But uh, when I was given that number, I looked at it and I said, hmm, that's not the number for the Northwest Community Bail Fund. I went on the website. I looked at the Contact Us page. I looked at that number, completely different from the number on my arm that those Hamas protesters have. I followed that number. It goes to an individual in Washington state. It makes no sense to me. I called that phone number. That phone number is a personal line. And the voicemail, when you call, because they don't pick up, I called at 11.30 my time, it's 8.30 their time. So if you wanna break laws, do it after the fact because they're not gonna answer the phone at 8.30 a.m. But when I got that voicemail, it was just a casual individual that said, bail fund, that's it. So there's something very odd going on. People are paying, they're paying the price for recklessness and it's fine and no uh, one cares. Please. You know, but this is the same yeah. place. I mean, Washington State in and of itself is absolutely buck wild. I'm very sad to report that you talk about Jay Inslee. He's the worst, truly. I mean, I'm sure people on the left would say that as well. He's absolutely nuts. Uh, the gubernatorial race, Bob Ferguson, the attorney general who, you know, thank him for all the chaos in Washington State. Two other Bob Fergusons actually joined the race to try and spread out the vote, also re registering as Democrats, because they, no one wanted the real Bob Ferguson to stand up and get the votes. Um, but 24 hours after the fact, I guess it's a state statute um, in which uh, those that have a similar name to someone that runs for office, is act they're actually not allowed to run for office um, if they have intent to confuse people of someone with a prominent stature or um, nor notoriety or whatever you want to call it, fame, infamous, all that. Very odd and just learned about that, but it makes sense. Checks out with Washington State.